up guys, Kool-Aid here, and today we're going to be doing part 3 of our guide to Fletcher, or more specifically, our guide to playing Fletcher with stickies as primaries. In this video, we'll just be going over some of the very basics. I wasn't going to do a separate video on this because a lot of this is probably known to you guys already, but as I started putting this video together, I realized that Fletcher has a lot of little nuances to learn, and learning these can really help you get the most out of him. So anyways, most of you probably know Fletcher can carry three stick grenades at a time, and they will regenerate individually every eight seconds. I want to make sure everyone knows, though, that equipping them with pressing three or four or whatever you have it bound to is going to be much more effective than just quick tossing them with Q or E. You know, this way you will have your left hand free for unimpeded movement, and movement is just as important to Fletcher as anything else. And also, if you do wind up to throw a grenade and decide you don't want to throw that grenade, you can just switch to something else with any without any sort of cooldown penalty now they will do anywhere from 1 to 100 damage yes I've actually gotten them to do one damage now that is obviously the max explosion radius of your nades um, but yes they can fall anywhere from that 1 to 100 damage range now that's pretty basic stuff but what's important about the damage is that you're gonna want to try to pay attention to how close your nades detonate to your target this and what range you're at will determine what weapon you want to use as a finisher. You know, it's pretty much impossible to go every over every scenario. But at close range on low health targets, typically you're going to want to go with the Empire 9. At medium range, you're probably going to want to go with the Blishlock. Or if you're using the Arnold, it really depends. You know, if you're, if you're confident with it, you can pretty much use it as your finisher at almost any range. However, I'd still recommend not neglecting the spraying power of that Empire 9. And the reason I'd like to finish with a gun instead of with just another sticky grenade is simply so I don't burn through all my sticky grenades and I have them there if I run into another enemy right away. So when it comes to actually throwing your stickies, knowing when to detonate is the first thing. It may sound pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory, but I actually do mess this up, especially when I haven't played Fletcher for a while and kind of get out of rhythm. But anyways, even though there is a delay between the throw and detonation, you can still hit detonate immediately after the grenade leaves your hand, and it will detonate when ready. So in almost all close range situations, you want to detonate as soon as you can. But be careful you don't detonate um, too early um, before you actually release the grenade. No, it's not going to blow up in your face, but you will have to go through the animation, the, the detonation animation, before you can throw another one. And honestly, as somebody that plays Fletcher a lot, I do this far too often. You know, mainly when I'm in an oh shit situation, I want to try to do too much at once. I'll just keep trying to throw a grenade out there and hit detonate too fast and it won't do anything. I look like an idiot and then I typically die right afterwards. Now on the flip side for longer throws you obviously don't want to detonate until it has time to arrive to its target and again I still mess this up from time to time simply because I have such a habit of detonating instantly after after it leaves my hand but this all just comes down to practice and getting into a rhythm with Fletcher and usually after I play a couple games with him um, I start to nail all this stuff and then you know that's when I really get into a rhythm with Fletcher and things start going really well. Now the next thing I want to mention is momentum Momentum. Thrown objects in this game, which include sticky grenades, are thrown faster or harder when you have momentum behind them. So if you see me jumping or jumping off a wall when I'm going for a longer throw, it's not for style points. It's because it's actually helping me get longer range and landing those longer shots. And obviously the more you move and the more unpredictable you are, the harder you're going to be to hit. Now the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to just these kind of basics is anticipation. Although aim and anticipation kind of go hand in hand, it doesn't require amazing aim to land sticky grenades. Now obviously if you're throwing them 10 feet away from a still target, then your aim probably needs some work. But stickies actually have a small magnet-like effect. Almost like a different hitbox than bullets have. I mean, it's not crazy hit huge. You still have to be very close, but doesn't have to be pinpoint like a sniper rifle. And of course, there's also no damage modifiers for what part of the body you stick them to. So yes, you have to be somewhat accurate for a stick, but more importantly, you have to anticipate your target's movements. Now, to be completely honest, it's not something that I can really give you a lot of tips on. It's, again, just something that comes with learning the speed of your grenades and learning uh, you know, how people react to you as Fletcher. Because when you're playing Fletcher and people know sticky grenades are going to be coming at them, they react 
differently than if you're, say, playing Fragger and you're coming at them. I mean, it just all depends on what Merc you're facing. So, anyways, guys, that's all I have for this video. We'll get into some better stuff in part four. But, um, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. Out. I am good with my hands, you would agree?